Good morning, everybody. It is uh, Pastor Randy here with Made Free Church. Hope you guys are having a great morning. Give me a minute. There we go. All right. There we go. So I'm glad that you guys are here this morning with me at the another session of uh, Made Free Church online Bible study. Um, today we're going to be studying responding in difficult times. We're going to be in First Samuel chapter 25 verses 23 31 and then tomorrow we're going to finish up chapter 25 so guys i hope you guys are enjoying it guys you know um what was i going to say i was going to say something uh anyway it doesn't matter um i hope you're enjoying this i want to you know uh, whether you guys are, are joining us on youtube or facebook or uh or through our made free church or reformed pastor podcasting platforms i'm delighted to have you with us and before we dive into the richness of god's word let's take a moment in prayer amen <clears throat> uh heavenly father we just come before you yeah and we and present you know our hearts it, and we're full of gratitude lord you know thank you for this opportunity to gather here uh, uh virtually through youtube and facebook and the podcasting platforms and as as a community of believers, Lord, you know, uh, seeking wisdom and understanding from your word. You know, as we explore these scriptures today, Lord, we open our minds and our hearts to receive the teachings that will transform us, Lord. Lord, I just ask, you know, that we, we Lord, I just ask you to get this lowly preacher out of the way and let your word go forward, Heavenly Father. Thank you for all that you do, Lord. We put on the full armor of God, which it says in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, Lord. We just ask that you rebuild those hedges, protection, those shields around us today, Lord. We thank you for all that you do, Heavenly Father. And we just ask you to send your legion of angels down to fight for us and with us as we pick up the weapons of warfare. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And all of us say amen. So, you know. Now let's set the stage for this journey, right? Uh, the pages of the Bible unfold a narrative that resonates with the complexities of human relationships and the unwavering grace of God. So our, our focus today is a pivotal moment in David's life, the man after God's own heart and during this and during his time in the wilderness. Now, David, you know, he is the, the anointed to be future king finds himself in an arid and challenging terrain, you know, evading the re re relentless pursuit of King Saul. You know, as we immerse ourselves uh, in this passage, we discover, you know, in this chapter that not only illustrates the harsh realities of life in the wilderness, but also reveals lessons of grace, humility, and divine intervention. You know, the unfolding drama, we encounter three central figures, right? David, the, the, the valiant warrior with a heart devoted to God. Abigail, a woman of wisdom and grace. And Nabal, a man whose actions and decision echoes the consequences of a heart and heart. You know, you know, David, you know, is on the run from Saul, you know, seeks provisions of this wealthy man, Nabal. But, 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 but. Nabal, living up to his name, which means fool, callously refuses assistance, provoking David into righteous anger, right? And, and, and this sets the stage for the clash of personalities and the exploration of how one responds to adversity. Now, amidst the tension, we witness the entrance of Abigail, right? Nabal's discerning wife. Uh, uh, Abigail becomes the beacon of humility, uh, and, uh, embodying the essence of grace. And uh, 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 um, where, where am I? Where am I? Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, so I missed the tension. We witnessed, you know, uh, Abigail, right? A discerning, gracious wife. Abigail becomes the beacon of wisdom and embodying the very essence of grace in the face of injustice, right? So as we embark uh, uh, on this journey through, 
you know, first Samuel 25, let's open our hearts and, and, and minds to the lessons that God has woven into the lives of these characters, you know, and may we find inspiration, you know, in the stories and discover the power of responding to life's changes with grace and faith. So as we weave unravel the threads um, of this narrative, right? Uh, seeking not only understanding of the historical context, but also glean the timeless truths that are relevant in our lives today. You know, may the word of God resonate in your hearts and guide us to navigate the wilderness uh, experiences in our own lives. So let's read today's passage, which is 1 Samuel 25, verses 23 to 31. And it says this, when Abigail saw David, she hurried and got down uh, from her donkey and fell before David and bowed uh, at, uh, David on her face and bowed to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, uh, on me alone, my Lord, be the guilt. Please let your servant speak in your ears and hear the words of your servant. Not let let not my Lord regard this worthless fellow Nabal for his name is so he is Nabal is the name of a folly is with him but I your servant did not see the young men of my Lord whom you sent now then my Lord as the Lord lives and as your soul lives because the Lord has restrained you from blood guilt um, and from saving uh, with your own hand now let your enemies and these who seek to do evil to my lord be as nabal now and now let it that this presence uh that your servant has brought to my lord be given to the young man who have followed my lord please forgive the trespasses of your servant for the lord will certainly make my lord a sure house because my Lord is fighting the battles of the Lord and the evil shall not be found in you as long as you live. Let, if, if men rise up and pursue you and seek your life, the Lord in the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of living in the care of the Lord, your God in the lives of your enemies shall sling out from this hollow of a sling. And when the Lord has come down my, to, to my Lord, according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you, has appointed you prince over Israel, my Lord shall have no cause of grief or pangs of conscience for having shed blood without cause or my Lord working salvation himself. When the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your servant. Amen. So let's set the background. So as we immerse into uh, the, the pages of 1 Samuel 25, we find David, the anointed future king of Israel, traversing uh, the unforgiving wilderness, right? Now, the, the rugged terrain becomes both a physical and a spiritual background for David as he evades the relentless uh, pursuit of, of King Saul, you know, who driven by jealousy seeks to extinguish the perceived threat posed by this, by, by this, this young shepherd turned warrior, you know, the wilderness, the wilderness is often a metaphorical space in the Bible representing trials and testing and, and spiritual growth becomes a crucible for David. You know, far removed from the comforts of the palace, David and his his band of loyal followers navigate the harsh reality of life on the run. You know, in, in this desolate expanse, the with that character of a leader is refined, right? And, and resilience and the reliance on God becomes not just a choice, but a necessity. You know, in the solitude of the wilderness, David's dependence opens uh, opens on God's it, it opens. Uh, uh, sorry, David's dependence on God deepens. Excuse me, 
you know, the stark contrast between the opulence of Saul's, Saul's court to the sacredity of uh, uh, the wilderness highlights the tension between worldly power and divine providence, right? It, it, it is against this backdrop that the narrative unfolds, bringing forth a test, right, of character that will shape the course of the events. Now, our, our attention shifts to Nabal. Right. A wealthy man whose name is fitting. Right. It means fool. Right. David recognizing Nabal's prosperity and understanding the principles of hospitality embedded in the culture sends, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sends messengers seeking provisions for his men. Now, Nabal, displaying a callous and ungrateful heart, dismisses David's request with contempt. Now, Nabal's refusal reverberates with implications, right? In a society where hospitality is not only a cultural norm, but it's an also a of, of, of reflection of, one character, of one's character. Nabal's action stands as a stark contrast to the values upheld, upheld by David, right? That the potential consequences of Nabal's folly is grave. Right. Not not only himself, not only for himself, but it's for his entire household. Now, David, you know, fueled by a sense of justice and probably, you know, a frustration of being rejected, contemplates retaliation. Right. The stage is set for the confrontation between king and man. Right. Whose actions embody the folly of, a, of pride and, and the consequences of a hardened heart. The wilderness becomes a stage for this mortal and uh, moral and, and ethical drama where choices are far have far reaching consequences. But see, faced with with the ball's refusal, David, known at you know for his military prowess and strategic thinking, reacts with the initial burst of anger. Right. A man, David, a man known, you know, uh, the, the re, excuse me, the, the rejection stings in the heart of the moment, right? David contemplates taking matters into his own hands. The wilderness, already a place of testing, becomes a crucible for, for David's response to injustice. You know, as we reflect on this, you know, we're confronted with the very human struggle of responding to perceived wrongs. You know, David, like any, any of us, grapples with the tension between righteous indignation and the call to extend justice. You know, the wilderness with its the challenges and isolation serves as the backdrop for this eternal struggle uh, within the heart of a future king. Right? You know, so as we go on, you know, we'll witness how intricate the narrative unfolds and in, in, in revealing the interplay of characters, right, and the consequences of choices, and ultimately the power of divine intervention in the face of folly. So, you know, in the scope of First Samuel uh, chapter twenty-five, verses twenty-three to thirty-one, Abigail emerges as a central theme: a woman of remarkable wisdom and grace, whose swift and discerning actions alter the course of a potentially tragic confrontation between David and Nabal. Now, Abigail's introduction to this narrative is marked uh, by her swift and decisive response to the brewing conflict, right? You know, sensing the impending danger, danger and recognizing her, her husband Nabal's foolishness. So she takes immediate action, right? Man, now, now Abigail doesn't hesitate. She acts promptly, demonstrating keen awareness of the volatile situation unfolding in the wilderness, right? So in, in the face of impending de disaster, Abigail's ability to assess the gravity of the moment and respond with uh, urgency showcases not only her practical wisdom, but also her courage. Right. The wilderness is often associated with the unpredictability and danger. Right. It becomes the backdrop of uh, of uh, 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 comes the uh, backdrop. Right. 
of of of, of uh, Abigail's intervention, right? A, a shining example of the proactive peacemaking. You know, Abigail's approaches David and his men, and her demeanor reflects a unique blend of humility and wisdom, right? Recognizing David's rightfully right rightful indignation and potential consequences of Nabal's action, Abigail humbles humbles herself before the future king. Right. Her approach is one of not 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 one of defiance or arrogance, but of genuine respect and submission, you know, in the, in, in the wilderness where where pride often clashes and power dynamics are magnified. Abigail's humility becomes a soothing balm. Her wisdom is evident in the way that she navigates the delicate balance of, of acknowledging David's grievances while seeking to avert a pending disaster. Abigail's actions exemplify the timeless truth that a soft answer turns away wrath, even in the harshest circumstances. So Abigail's words are, are, are not mere pleasantries. They're a masterful composition of wisdom, diplomacy, and the pill to higher principles of justice and righteousness. You know, her message in her message, Abigail acknowledges David's status as God's anointed and appeals to his sense of destiny and purpose, right? So she recounts the injustice by Nabal, emphasizing that the consequences of retaliation would tarnish David's legacy, right? Abigail's, uh, Abigail wisely direct, redirects David's focus from the immediate vengeance to the greater narrative of his divine calling and, and, and her words echo the truth that sometimes it takes a person of wisdom and grace to remind us of our higher calling and purpose. So Abigail's message uh, doesn't, doesn't merely seek to pacify David. It, it endeavors to transform his perspective, right? The, the wilderness with, its barren landscapes and harsh conditions becomes a canvas upon which Abigail paints a portrait of redemption and restraint. We know through her, her through words, Abigail becomes an instrument of wisdom, redirecting the trajectory of the narrative from one of a potential bloodshed to a path of, of grace and mercy. You know, as, as we dive deeper into these passages, you know, let us draw inspiration from Abigail's character. You know, in our own lives, may we embody wisdom and act swiftly in, in the face of conflict. With the humility to approach others with grace and the ability to speak words that bring healing and transformation. Abigail's intervention teaches us that even in the wilderness of life's challenges, the power of grace and wisdom can chart a course towards reconciliation and redemption. Amen? Amen. So, as we unravel the scope of 1 Samuel 25, there's some key themes and lessons that emerge offering insights into the human experience and the power of God's grace. You know, at the, at, at the heart of the narrative, right, is a theme of grace. Grace extended in the face of injustice so david's david david wronged by the ball's refusal you know contemplates retribution in the wilderness now now it is abigail you know who embodies grace intervening to prevent tragedy and her actions shine as a beacon of divine grace challenging at the prevailing norms of retaliation and revenge you know in the wilderness of our own lives where injustices and offenses abound, the call to respond with grace echoes loudly, right? Abigail's example beckons us to rise above the desire for vindication and embrace the higher path to, of extending mercy, right? The wilderness becomes a testing ground, you know, for the capacity to, uh, 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 to mirror God's grace, even when faced with the harsh realities of injustice you know the last couple of years that's been happening to me it's just like constant man constant these people there are they, these people call themselves christians you know but yet they they're, they're coming after me and it's just part of part of that you know so 
where, 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 you know, and I have to extend grace. Yeah. You know, I have to extend forgiveness, which is very hard to do in the midst of the battle, but that's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? That's what I have to do, you know, because I would, I would rather not have to worry about it and let God deal with it. The battle is not mine. It's God's man. So, so don't, don't get that twisted. You know what I mean? So we have to, but, but in the wilderness of our own lives, we're in justice office of bound. The call to respond with grace echoes loudly. Now, now Abigail's example beckons us to rise above the does the desire for vindica vindic vindication and embrace the higher path and extending mercy. You know, the, the, the wilderness becomes a testing ground for our capacity to mirror God's grace, even when we face uh, with, with, with harsh realities of injustice. You know, last couple of years, you know, it, 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 that, that's been happening to me, you know. So injustice, lies, craziness, you know, and, but that's okay today because I forgive them and, and, and I give them grace and mercy as God has shown me grace and mercy. Right? I mean, we're all going through something. You know, and, and and that and that's the reality of you. We're all going through something. So, you know, with with someone. So why not just offer grace and and forgiveness? And you know, it, it's like you know when God forgives us, man, He just doesn't He doesn't remember it anymore. It's like He's got amnesia. He doesn't care. You know, He He doesn't care. He doesn't remember. He doesn't bring it up. You know. So let's get back to our text. You know, uh, Abigail's swift and discerning intervention underscores you know, the significance of wise counsel and proactive peacemaking, you know, in the wilderness where, where tensions runs high and conflicts deepen, uh, to, uh, threaten to erupt, Abigail steps into the fray with wisdom and humility. You know, her actions remind us that sometimes a single individual can alter the course of events through timely and, 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 and you know, to intervention. You know, so the, the wilderness of life present pre presents us with situations where conflicts escalate and the need for wise intervention becomes paramount. Abigail's example challenges us, uh, challenges us to be those peacemakers, right? P possessing the discernment to address conflicts before they escalate, right? Offering words of wisdom that can diffuse tensions and redirect the tra trajectory towards reconciliation. You know, another theme that resonates through the, through the, through these passages is a call to respond to difficult people with humility and kindness. That's hard to do, right? So Nabal's uh, whose name, whose names means fool, fool embodies the challenges that presented by those whose actions are rooted in folly and, 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 and obstinacy you know and david initially reacting with righteous anger faces the choice and how to respond to this dif difficult individual abigail with her her humility and kindness provides a model of navigating relationships with those who seem impossible to deal with you know her approach uh challenges us to look beyond the surface of difficult personalities and respond to the spirit of humility, right? In the wilderness, right? Uh, uh, of challenging relationships where the terrain is often rocky and emotions run high. Abigail's example becomes a compass guiding us towards the path of kindness and understanding. You know, it, it, so as we reflect on, of this, of the, on these timeless themes and lessons, the wilderness with its challenges and uncertainty becomes a metaphor for the various seasons of, of, of our lives where grace, wise intervention and humility are very tested. You know, as we journey through our own wilderness experiences, may the lessons gleaned from this narrative inspire us to respond with grace in the face of injustice, intervene wisely in conflicts, and extend humility and kindness to those who challenge us. You know, the, the, the wilderness, though daunting, can be a place of profound transformation and growth in, in, when navigated with the compass of God's enduring wisdom and grace. So how do we apply this, right? 
So uh, Samuel, First uh, Samuel twenty-five, not only unfolds the, the compelling historical account, but also offers a blueprint of navigating the wilderness in our own lives. Right, as we dive into this application of the key themes and lessons, you know, we're going to explore some timeless truth for our daily existence. You know, grace is the unmerited favor and kindness extended to others finds its resonance uh, uh, in, in the ordinary moments of our lives, right? The wilderness experiences that we encounter guys, whether in relationships, work or personal challenges provide ample opportunities to exhibit grace, right? Now, Abigail's swift and gracious response to David's situation prompts us to reflect on our own interactions. You know, the hustle and bustle of our daily lives, you know, recognizing some opportunities of grace may may require swift uh, a, a shifted perspective. You know, it, it involves pausing in the midst of conflict or offense and choosing to respond with kindness. The wilderness of our our, our routines become the canvas on which we paint strokes of grace we offering forgiveness understanding and compassion in the moments that that might otherwise lead to to discord so conflicts are inevitable right they are an inevitable part inevitable part of the human experience you know uh, the wilderness of life often throws us into situations where tensions rise. Abigail's wise intervention serves as a beacon, a guiding, guiding us in developing uh, the discernment that's needed to navigate the conflicts, right? Which, which, with grace and wisdom, you know. So, developing guys wisdom in 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 conflict resolution involves a commitment to understanding right the perspectives of others choosing our battles wisely and seeking solutions that promote harmony rather than escalation the wilderness of disagreements and misunderstanding becomes an arena where we can exercise the wisdom inspired by abigail's example fostering you know uh, uh fostering resolutions that reflect god's redemptive purpose you know, the call to practice humility and kindness re resonates loudly in this narrative. You know, Abigail's humility in, in approaching David and, and her kindness in re addressing the conflict with the ball, you know, becomes a guiding light for our own responses to the challenge, challenging situations. You know, in the wilderness moments, adversity, when pride and ego may tempt us to react defensively, the virtues of humility and 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 kindness become a powerful antidote, right? Practicing humility involves acknowledging our own limitations and recognizing the 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 intent and the inerrant worth of others. You know, even in the face with difficulty, right? The wilderness of trials becomes a training ground where we can cultivate the spirit of kindness, choosing to extend grace and understanding. It, it would face with with challenges you know in our daily lives guys the application of these principles goes beyond just a, a theatrical understanding it requires intentional effort and a commitment to embody grace wisdom humility and kindness you know and, and as we navigate the wilderness of our experience right you know may the lessons glean here you know uh, uh in in this narrative inspire us to recognize the opportunity for grace the, and develop wisdom in handling in handling conflicts and and practice humility and kindness in the face of life's challenges you know in doing so we do not we, we not only honor the principles found in scriptures but we also contributed to the creation of a more harmonious grace-filled world you know, as we journey through these the, the, these lessons, right, uh, in in the narrative, in this narrative, it's essential to not only grasp the, the the theatrical understanding, but also to apply these principles to the intricacies of our own lives. The challenges that we face in the wilderness of our existence 
provide a fertile ground for seeds of grace, wisdom, and humility to take root. Right. So I want to embark on a reflective and prefer exploration, seeking transformation in the crucible of our daily lives. You know, grace is a powerful force uh, that that has the potential to transform relationships, diffuse conflicts and foster a spirit of understanding. It has to happen on both sides. Right. So as we reflect on the wilderness of our of, of our daily lives, I want to encourage each and every one of you to pause and reflect on the areas where you can show grace. You know, it may be a moment of disagreement, challenging relationships, or a situation that tests your patience. Consider the possibility of extending grace to others, even when it seems undeserved. Reflect on your reactions and responses to various scenarios. You know, are there opportunities to offer forgiveness, understanding with a count or a kind word? You know, uh, in a, in the quiet moments of reflection in the wilderness of your own thoughts become a sacred place in cultivating a heart that mirrors the grace bestowed on us by our heavenly father. You know, the, the, the challenge is, that we encounter often demand more than our own strength and understanding, right? And in the face of difficulty, I, I want to invite each and every one of you to join me in a prayer of wisdom and strength, right? Uh, to, 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 and respond with grace, right? Just as Abigail's intervention was guided by divine wisdom. So, you know, we too can seek that same wisdom that surpasses human understanding, right? So let's pray. Yeah, and and in, in in your prayers and discernments, right? You know, ask God for the discernment to navigate challenges wisely. Pray for the strength to resist temptation to react impulsively in the heart of the moment, and and may that the wilderness of your prayers be a sacred ground where you can find solace, guidance, and the empowerment needed to extend grace even in the face of adversity. Amen. Amen. Um, Heavenly Father, we just come before you and we say thank you for your word. We say thank you for this opportunity. Lord, we just, we invite your Holy Spirit in, Lord, and we just ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you give us the wisdom, understanding, and forgiveness in the face of adversity. Lord, empower us today, Heavenly Father, as we find solace and guidance and empowerment through you. Lord, give us that, that, that spirit of understanding, that spirit of forgiveness, the spirit of grace today, Lord. We love you. We worship you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So I, uh, guys, I want you to pr- be, be prayerful about, you know, uh, uh, finding that grace and solace, you know, in the midst of, of, of your guys' uh, 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 wilderness, you know what I mean? When you guys are facing adversity, you know, uh, 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 you know, the, the journey of faith, you know, get, 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 get with your mentors or your disciples. I don't like calling them mentors. I like calling them disciples, but, um, get with them, you know, let them know what you're struggling with. Get, we get into your church community. Cause you know, the journey of faith is not meant to be walked alone, you know, in the wilderness uh, of our challenges, it is crucial, crucial to have a support system that encourages and uplifts. You know, you know, I I want to I want to extend in each and every one of you guys to share, you know, uh, your challenges with a mentor, disciple or a trusted friend or someone you consider a a confidant. Right. Open up, open up about your situations that test your resolve and to respond with grace. I mean, I you know, it's like this, man, you know, uh, you know, I have guys around me that I go to. You know, and and they tell me the hard truth. You know, and and they do, and I do it for them. You know what I mean? So so sharing our challenges with others, it not only provides a sense of of community, but it also invites you know a collective prayer and support, right? You know, the the the, the company of trusted companions. You know, we can bear one each other's burdens and find strength and unity. Right. The wilderness of, of, of shared challenges becomes a place of prayers that are multiplied. 
you know, in the face of God, uh, the, in the face of, uh, 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 and the grace of God is experienced in the midst of community. And that's true. You know, you know, it, that, that's why it's, it, that, that, that's why it's always good to be in a church community. If you're not in a true church community, find a good Bible believing church, a Calvary chapel, you know, or, you know, something like that, man. I, I, you know, cause we only have this parachurch, right? So I go to the Calvary chapel and let me tell you, man, I, that church is just awesome. It, it, it cut, they, they cut right to the point, man. And they, you know, and it's so cool to see a church like Calvary, like this Calvary chapel be so solid as they are. And, and I hope that this church and made free church becomes that solid, you know, and, and so as we collectively reflect and pray, you know, uh, uh, and share, may the lessons here of this narrative resonate in our hearts and manifest in tangible transformation in our lives. You know, let this be a journey of growth where, where the challenges that we face become opportunities of grace and our prayers become a source of strength, wisdom, and unity. Amen. So as we draw the curtains to a close, uh, you know, on this moment of reflection, you know, I want to give you guys, I give you guys, I'd say this every, every morning, our website is up. We got some things on there, man, that, that you can, you can check out, man. If you go to www.madefreechurch.org, you know, um, uh, which is up and live, you know, this is, this is our opportunity, man, to, to be a part of this online community and, and pray for us because we want to open up a church. We have, you know, stuff that we're doing to help fund, you know, our women's and children's discipleship ranch. I think that's very, very, very needed because there's a lot of women that are on the streets because of drug addiction and alcoholism and mental health and all this other stuff. And they have kids and there's really no place for them to go. And it's not just for women and kids. It's, you know, if women that don't have kids as well can go there. So, um, you know, so, so go, go do that. So in addition to the website, I want to announce that, that, you know, I've written several books, right. And, and these books are reformation revived, which is, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a Calvinist. So don't even get tripped. Don't go get twisted. Um, you know, uh, uh, it's called reformation revives. It's about the reformation. Now, if you're struggling with drugs and alcohol and stuff like that, we have two books It's called recovery and redemption which is a 12 step program view through a biblical lens and overcoming relapse, um, which is a biblical guide to overcome relapse. You know what I mean? Uh, the apostle John, you know, why, uh, which I love the apostle John is one of my favorite apostles, uh, walking in the footsteps of Christ, which is the discipleship book that we just launched. Uh, we do have a 60 day men's devotional men and women's devotion called the warrior's heart. And these are all available on Amazon books as well as, Barnes and Noble. And I do have a, a special treat for this month only, you know, walking in his ways, uh, is a great book. It's a guide to living a biblical life. And this is free on Barnes and Noble only. Uh, you got to download the app. You got to, you know, set up a free account and then look for the book, walk, you know, the warrior's heart, it'll come up. Then you put in, uh, or not a warrior's heart, sorry. Uh, uh, a walking in his ways, right. Um, and, uh, put this code. It's, it's, it's B as in boy, N as in Nancy, P as in Paul, W as in William, I as in India, H as in Henry and W as in William at checkout. Right. And you'll get this for free. Yeah. And you will. And I, I, I hope this, I hope this, this, this free book helps you because we need to be living a biblical life. And, and I'm launching another book, this, uh, this, this, well, hopefully by the end of the month, uh, it all depends because I'm having it proofread by several different people, but uh, it's, it's the acts of the apostles, you know, and then I, I'm writing another one right now. And, and uh, uh, it is a, it's a guide to biblical manhood. You know, I think that biblical masculinity has just been shot out of this, this country. And uh, you know, what, what makes all this also awesome is that, you know, we're going to be at the end of the year, we're going to be making uh, donations to Tunnels to Towers, which helps our vets. Believers in Christ Fellowship, which is where we feed the homeless and bring church to the homeless every week. And Mary's Ranch, right? Um, 
And uh, uh, these are all initiatives that are aimed to make a positive impact in our community. You know, when you purchase a book, you're not only investing in your spiritual growth, but you're also contributing to these meaningful causes, right? And also we have a clothing line out there that's called Crucified Clothing. It's on Etsy, right? You can get all kinds of products and stuff. What's great about this, all the proceeds for Crucified Clothing goes to the establishment of Mary's Ranch. So go check out our Etsy site and thanks for your support. And if you guys want to make a direct donation, uh, you could do so on the Made Free Church website. You know, we are a nonprofit charitable church and your generosity allows us to continue the message as uh, mission of, of spreading uh, God's love and supporting those in needs and, and your prayers and, you know, uh, support are invaluable to us. And I want to express my sincere gratitude for you guys to be a part of this online community. Together, we can make a difference. And your involvement is crucial, you know, to the, the success of these endeavors. So before, you know, we part ways, I have one more request. You know, um, if you've found inspiration in our teachings, right, please consider to take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, as well as our podcasting platforms and and by doing so uh our reach to help uh help us share the gospel with a broader audience you know your, your simple actions make can make a significant impact on spreading the message of hope now guys if you guys want to hear uh a warrior's heart you can check me out at tactical bible guy at tiktok uh, and may the lord jesus christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we leave today, Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you just continue to do a mighty work in our heart, Heavenly Father. Thank you for all that you do, Lord. You're such an amazing dad, and we love you. Lord, give us traveling mercies as we go about our day, Lord. Get us prepared for this day, and let us walk in your footsteps, Lord. Give us, give us the spirit of forgiveness and grace today, Lord. You know, we love you, we worship you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. All right, guys, so uh, go in peace, man. We'll see you tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you guys.